TTRLA, man. We are back with another clip. You know what I mean? Hey, man, say, man, make sure you go ahead and like, subscribe, and share to my channel. Like, subscribe, and share to my channel. I'm going to give you two seconds. All right, you should be good. This right here is an informative clip. To be quite honest, I'm doing this video um, to get a little bit more understanding of some scripture verses that my mother had given me. She gave me a Bible for my birthday on February 2nd and in the Bible she put in some scriptures for me to uh to read um she's very much so on her path to righteousness and being more Christ-like and more God-like and um she wants me to be on that journey as well not to say that I'm not but my journey of spirituality is different from her journey of spirituality she is a uh, Christian. I'm someone who believes in God. I do believe in the Bible and I do believe in spirituality, but I don't feel like I'm worthy enough to say that I'm a Christian because of who I am. So, but even this with that, I still uh, want to be closer to God. And so I'm on my own spiritual journey. So I want y'all to, you know, go with me. Um, it's a verse that I want us to well, I want to understand and I want to read it to y'all so that we can understand together. Uh, it's Romans chapter 3, 23. But I'm going to start from the beginning of Romans so we can just have some background. Because I think when you read specific scriptures without the background, you know, the begin the first part of the scripture, it kind of leaves a little amb ambigu ambiguity. So I'm going to start at... Uh, I'm going to start at the beginning. And this is um, this is a, a teaching book. So the title of this says, God's Righteousness Upheld. Chapter 3, Romans chapter 3. When, I'm sorry. Then what advantage has the Jew? Or what is the value of circumcision? So these, this, these two um, uh, lines right here, they're asking questions. What then what advantage has the Jew or what is the value of circumcision much in every way to begin with the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. So right here is saying that okay, they, they basically saying, look, you asking me what advantage the Jews have and what is the value of circumcision? They saying like, hey, the Jews was entrusted with the word from God. Oracles mean word, if I'm not mistaken. Let's look down here. Let's look down. This, they have this. Um, <clears throat> so it says, so it gives an understanding. So it says, after arguing that the Spirit's work in Gentiles renders them true Jews and true circumcision, Paul raises the logical question of whether there is any advantage or value. So this is Paul asking a question and being eth an ethnic Jew and physically circumcised he probably means value of salvation since he uses a Greek now a, a, fo a folia that corresponds to the verb a folio to give value benefit one might expect Paul to answer that no advantage or value results from being Jews instead he claims that the Jews have great advantages consistent chiefly in possession of the oracles of God which refers to the OT scriptures and they focus given what Paul says the verse following God promises to save Israel on the Jews and being entrusted with the oracles of God okay so what is what if some were unfaithful does their faithfulness nullify the faithfulness of God by no means let God be true though everyone were a liar as it is written so basically it seemed like Paul is asking well what about um, people it seemed maybe like people who may not be you know faithful to God or uh, does that nullify the faithfulness of God in them or around them and Paul is like nah by no means Slim they don't nullify nothing because everybody is a liar everybody be sinning so the, God is not going to leave you 
That's what I'm getting from this. If you if y'all see different, tap in with me. You know, well, let's talk about it. Um. So I'm gonna re repeat that. It say, by no means let God be true, though. Everyone were a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and prevail when you are judged. So basically saying that uh, you gonna be judged by God based on the things that you say. But if our unrighteousness serves to show the righteousness of God, what shall we say? The, that God is unrighteous to inflict wrath on us? I speak in a human way, by no means. For then how could God judge the world? But if through my lie God's truth abounds to his glory, why am I still being condemned as a sinner? And why not do evil that good may come? As some people slanderous charge us with saying their condemnation is just. So basically he's saying, why can't we just be out here sinning and God still look out for us? That's what I'm getting from it. He's saying, because if we are all liars and sinners and, and God is still going to show us faithfulness, you know, how can we be condemned? That's what I'm getting from it. If y'all see something different, you know, let me know. So, but down here it says, Paul does not provide a full answer to the objection here. See, I, I understood that because I ain't really seeing no objection. For that, he shows the Jewish objector's position is untenable. For then God could not judge the Gentile world either, and no evil behavior would be punished. Indeed, son of Paul's Jewish opponents insisted that he taught a doctrine of cheap grace, that God receives more glory when Christians do evil and then are forgiven. Oh, Paul empathetically rejects such a view as slander, but wait until chapter 6. He said, oh, so... He's saying the Gentiles was asking, well, why can't we just be out here doing whatever we want? And God still look out for us. Uh, so it goes on to say, what then are we Jews any better of? Oh, uh, no, it says, what then are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all both Jews and Greeks are under sin as it is written. No one is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good. Not even one. Their throat is an open grave. Dang. They use their tongues to deceive. Their venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curse curses and bitterness their feet are swift to shed blood in their paths and ruin and misery and the way of peace they may um the way of peace they have not known there is no fear of god before their eyes so it seems like he's saying both the jews and the gentiles are under sin and <clears throat> nobody doing right not the jews nor the gentiles now we know that whatever the law says it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God for this is um, line 20 for my works of the law no human being will be justified in his sight since through the law concerns knowledge of sin verse 21 but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law although the law and the prophets bear witness to it the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe for there is no distinction for all have sinned and have fall short of the glory of God we just gonna continue on to the end and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption of Christ Jesus so basically he's saying that everybody is sinful everybody even God's chosen people are sinful but those um he's saying for the uh, all who have sinned for the um are short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption of Jesus Christ so basically he's saying Jesus Christ paid the price Jesus Christ paid the price for our sins and so under Christ's death we are redeemed um whom God put forward as a appropriation by his blood to be received by faith so that is when you go to church on sunday and you have to um do uh what's it called um 
uh, every first Sunday they call it when you take uh, uh, oh you have to do chameleon so when, when they refer to the appropriation by his blood to be received by faith that is to my understanding to be chameleon because when you're chameleon you're taking the body of Christ and the grape juice serves as the blood of Jesus okay so then it says this was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins it was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus so what he's saying is those who believe in Jesus he'll be just for you he'll fight your battles that's what I'm I'm, I'm reading to understand then this is verse 27 then what becomes of our boasting is it is as it it is excluded by what kind of law by a law of works no but by the law of faith for we hold for we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law or is God the God of Jews only is he not the God of Gentiles also yes of Gentiles also since God is one who will justify the circumcised by faith so basically he's saying that you may not be physically circumcised but you are circumcised by faith meaning that you have given your life to back to God he died for us he gave his life for us but now you're giving your life back to God even as a Gentile uh, and this is the last verse 31 do we then overthrow the law by this faith by no means on the contrary we uphold the law so basically he said and thank add a, add a word to the reading and the hearing of his word thank you Jesus now I, I understood that to mean that basically Jesus definitely is definitely going to look out for you he definitely going to keep you in his arms but at the end of the day you still have to abide by the rules and the laws of him because this world is going to be full of sin you still want to try to, you still want to do your best and your due diligence at operating within God's words you know what I'm saying although God did pay the price for us we still have to be judged by the things that we say and do so that was Romans um, chapter 3 to uh, 31. Um, so I hope y'all enjoyed that. I'm going to try to do these a little bit more often. Uh, the next um, scripture we can go over is Romans 6. Romans 6, 23. And so we'll read the beginning of chapter 6 in Romans and go to the end. So that way we can have some understanding. But let me know. Give me some feedback. I appreciate y'all, man.